Hallelujah. Will somebody come on and give God some praise and give you like Jesus. Come on, give him praise. Oh, my hallelujah belongs to him. He most certainly deserves my praise. We certainly honor him today, for there is none like him nowhere. Can I get a witness in this house? There is none like him nowhere. Oh, he's been good to me. Hallelujah. Psalm says he deserves it. My hallelujah belongs to him. If I couldn't say a word, I just raise my hand because God is worthy of my praise. I don't know about you, but I'm going to serve him. I'm going to love him. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to worship him. Hallelujah, because my hallelujah belongs to him. We certainly honor the spirit of Christ today. Thank God for each of you here in your respective places. Amen. Thank God for all that he has done and continues to do in our lives. Amen. Did you come to hear from God on today? Amen. Amen. There's a word that God has given me to share with you on today. Amen. We need the word of God. Can I get a witness? We need the word of God. Amen. Amen. Love you. I appreciate them today. We give honor to the Spirit of God. Amen. So we let Lady Murray to each of you in your respective places. Thanks God for Thank God for the visitor that we have today. We thank God for you uh, joining us and being a part, amen, of our service on the day. Amen, amen. We're going to get right into the word of the Lord today, amen, and give you what thus saith the Lord, amen. I hope you brought your sword with you, amen, amen, amen. We're going to get into the word of God. Amen. Pray that you have an appetite to receive what God has prepared for you. Amen. That's one thing about a good cook. He or she likes people to show up at the table with an appetite. Amen. Show up at the table ready to eat and receive that which God has prepared. Amen for you. Amen on today. So I'm going to ask that you open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. We begin at verse number 4 in the Bible on today. Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 4 through 7. Praise the Lord. And the scripture reads, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. Even when we were dead in sins, hath he quickened us together with Christ by grace you are saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Bless the Lord. I want you to flip over to another verse, if you would, in Matthew 16 and verse number 19. Matthew 16 and verse 19. And the scripture reads, Jesus speaking, he says, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Amen. And I want to 
speak. From part two of the message, take your seat. Take your seat. Would you bow your ears as we pray? Our Father and our God, we thank you today. We give you praise for this opportunity. Father, to preach and teach your word on today. We thank you for every person that's under the sound of my voice. And Father, we thank you for your presence in this place on today. Your manifested presence, God. We ask, Lord, that you would bless every person today. Allow them to hear that which the Spirit said to the church today. We recognize, God, that we need your word in our lives. We cannot make it without your word. So God bless today in Jesus' name. Allow your word to go forth and allow it to accomplish that which you sent it to do and we'll give you praise for it in Jesus' precious name. We thank you and we praise you. Amen. Amen. And amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Praise his mighty name. There is much rich revelation that Paul imparts to us in his writing in the book of Ephesians. But I want to begin today by reiterating something that I said to you in part one of this message that I believe is very important for believers to grasp and understand. And that is, as believers, we have power with heaven. I want you to understand that today. We have power with heaven. And the enemy does not want you to understand that. But you have power with heaven. But we must properly assume our seats in heavenly places in Christ so this power can be activated to the extent that it should. And this is why Jesus said in Matthew 16, verse 19, and I will give unto you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. In other words, the reason that God has given you the keys to the kingdom of heaven is because he has given you a seat in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In other words, you got the keys because you got the seat. And let me prove it to you, amen, that we have power with heaven. It is because after Jesus says that he has given us the keys to the kingdom of heaven in Matthew 16 and 18, he then continues and says to us, and whatsoever Thou shalt bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth, shall be loosed in heaven. You see, the reason that it's bound and loosed in heaven, after you have bound and loosed it on earth, is because you've got power with heaven. In other words, heaven recognizes the authority that has been given to you as a believer. I need you to understand that. Heaven recognizes the authority that has been given to you as a believer. And heaven recognizes as well where you have been seated in Christ. In heavenly places. And therefore, heaven responds when we have activated the authority that comes with our seat. Praise the Lord. And most of all, heaven recognizes who you have been seated with or who you are seated with. His name is Jesus. Somebody shout with me, we've got power with heaven. Oh, come on. I said shout. I didn't say whisper. Somebody shout. We got power with heaven. We got power with heaven. You see, when we are properly seated with Christ, we are then in position to 
to give heaven something to respond to. I want you to get that. When we are properly seated with Christ, we are then in position to give heaven something to respond to. But the first thing we've got to do is we've got to take our seats. You see, I've come to realize that there are some times when we say that we are waiting on God. Sometimes we say that we're waiting on God when heaven is actually waiting on us. Why? Because God has already given us the seat, the keys, and the authority to bind and loose on earth. So that heaven can correspond and loose it on in heaven. To bind it in heaven and to loose it in heaven as we've done on earth. So if we take the authority to do it on earth, God will do it in heaven. I need you to get that in your spirits. Praise God. Why is that? Because of where we are seated. Because of where we are seated in heavenly places. And let me give you some more proof of that. That heaven responds to your authority on earth. Let me give you some more proof. The Bible says in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, that if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. In other words, the scripture is letting us know that if we take our seats and use the authority that we have been given by God, heaven is ready to respond. Oh, I come to tell you today that heaven is waiting on us. Praise God. The scripture is as clear as it can get in the verse that I just read that sometimes when we say that we are waiting on God that heaven is actually waiting on us. Because he said if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked way then the Bible says, then, in other words, at that time, will I hear from heaven, God says, and I will heal the land. So you tell me who, who is waiting on who? Heaven is waiting on us. In other words, sometimes, even though we've got the keys of the kingdom of heaven to unlock what we want on earth, we often do not use our keys to do so. Praise God. Because we have been seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And we have the keys to unlock what we want on earth. Oh, bless his name. And we have the keys to loose what we want on earth. In other words, oftentimes, once again, heaven is waiting on us to use the authority that has already been given to us. Just like I said to you, in part one of this message, God has given us the power and the authority to speak to things. I need you to get that. God has given you the authority to speak to things. Praise his name. Amen. And not only that, but God has given you power to speak to him about things. You need to get that. Why? Because you are seated in a heavenly place. And you have power with heaven. And just for another scriptural witness, I want you to turn with me for a moment to Isaiah chapter 45. Amen. Because I want to show you that God is waiting for you to speak to him about things. Isaiah chapter 45 Verse 11, watch what the Bible says. It says, Thus said the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, and his Maker, 
Watch this. He says, ask me of things to come concerning my sons and concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. What does the scripture say? It says, concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. In this passage of scripture, God is speaking of his sons, plural. I want you to notice that in your Bible. He's speaking of his sons. His sons is plural and it's a small s. So you need to understand that he's not talking about Jesus. But in this verse, he's talking about his sons, you and me. The Bible says in 1 John 3 and 2, Beloved, now are we the sons of God? And it doth not yet appear who we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So the Bible says, now are we the sons of God? And God is telling us through his word that we need to speak to him about what we need and want done in earth. Place of dominion. The word dominion defined pertains to the power of Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Amen. I want you to turn there very quickly, very quickly. Amen. Genesis chapter 1, verse number 26. And I want you, I want to remind you what God said to you about the dominion that He expects you to have. In verse 26, the Bible says, And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. And let them have what? Dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. This verse lets us know that God created us to have dominion. Now, there are four times that Paul speaks of this term, heavenly places, that I want to call to your attention today. He speaks concerning this term, heavenly places, in four places. Firstly, is Ephesians 1, verse 3, Ephesians 1, verse 20, Ephesians 2, verse 6, and Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10. And I want to look specifically at each one of those times when Paul speaks of this word, of this phrase, heavenly places. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, in your Bible, Paul says here in verse 3, he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who have blessed us with all spiritual blessings, where? In heavenly places in Christ. So when this phrase is used in verse 3, the scripture is letting us know that it is in heavenly places that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Now the scripture says that he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. Praise God. You must understand that the spiritual is more significant and more powerful than the earthly realm. And God says, our, the scripture says to us, amen, that he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. I want you to understand today that as a believer that is seated in heavenly places, you are not lacking anything in your life. Because he's given you all giving you spiritual blessings. The Bible says all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Now the next place that we have a, that this term or this phrase heavenly places is used is in verse 20. And this verse speaks of where God has raised up Christ and sat him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Praise God. Verse 20, he's raised up Christ and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. Now, that's what happens in Ephesians 2, verse 6, our primary verse. This verse 
speaks of God raising us up together with Christ and made us sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So he's raised Christ up in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 20 and sat him at his right hand in heavenly places and then in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 he has raised us up together with Christ and made us sit in heavenly places. I want you to understand that these heavenly places are significant. If they were not significant, they would not be mentioned four times in Ephesians. Now, the fourth time that this term is used is in verses 8 through 10 of chapter 3. I mentioned all of those verses because I want you to understand what it is saying in context. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. Now I want to read all of those verses. Amen. Then we're gonna then we're gonna comment on some of the things that Paul is saying to us. In Ephesians 3, verse 8, Paul says, Unto me who am less than the least of all saints. Is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ? And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers where in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. That's why I want to park for a moment. Amen. Because these verses speak of God's intent to use us, to use you and me, who are seated in heavenly places, to make known to principalities and powers the manifold wisdom of God. God wants to use you and I Amen. To reveal something to powers and principalities in heavenly places. Now, we're going to make this plain to you. I need you to see this. Amen. Because you are somebody. God has set you in heavenly places for a reason. As a matter of fact, before I deal with Ephesians 3, 8 through 10, let us go back a moment to Ephesians chapter 2. And let's look at verses six and seven again in context so we can understand what the Bible is talking about when it speaks of these riches. Watch this. In Ephesians chapter two, verse six, the Bible says, and have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Watch this. Verse seven, that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. So Christ, God wants to show us through Christ the exceeding riches of his grace. As I said to you last week, he's not talking about cheap grace. Come on, somebody. But he's talking about the exceeding riches of his grace. God wants to show you something, and God even wants to show the heavenly something through you. When I say the heavenly, amen, I'm talking about powers and principalities. Amen, because we learn in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 21, amen, that God has placed us above these powers and principalities. As a matter of fact, in verse 21 of chapter 1, uh, just for a moment, it says, for above all principality and power and might and dominion, every name that is named, not in this world only, but also in the world to come. So these heavenly places that God has seated us in are far above principalities. I want you to stay with me. And not only 
is a form of a principality now. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 21, that it's far above all principality. And I want you to understand, praise God, when the Bible, amen, speaks of principalities, amen, in heavenly places, you must understand that demonic forces also are in heavenly places. You remember when Satan came up to God and asked, amen, for permission, rather. He needed permission to do to Job what he wanted to do. Say with me. You see, Job was seated, hallelujah, amen, in a place. He was in a guarded position because God was protecting him. Do you not know that he's also protecting you? Come on, somebody. Amen. Did you not know that you don't have to be a friend? I'm going to get back to Ephesians 3 in a moment. Amen. Amen. But did you not know, praise God, that you do not have to be afraid of the devil? Right. And you do not have to be pray, afraid of principalities? Because God has seated you in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Watch this. Far above all principalities. Come on, somebody. And powers. Amen. And dominions. Amen. Praise God. Far above it, God has placed you. Going back to Ephesians chapter 3, verses 8 through 10. I want us to look very careful at these particular verses because there's something very powerful that the scriptures convey to us about these heavenly places that God has seated us in, that I want you to see in these verses. Amen. Because in these verses, it is revealed to us that God wants to use us, the believers, who are seated in heavenly places in Christ, to put the powers and principalities on notice. Stay with me. And you got to stay with me to get this. Praise God. These verses reveal that God wants to use us to reveal that which even the powers and principalities that are already in heavenly places do not know. Why? Because the Bible says it was hidden in God. Right in your Bible. It has been hidden in God, verse 9, Ephesians 3, I believe, amen, since the foundation of the world, it's been hidden in God. And God wants to use you to reveal these things that have been hidden in him. In other words, God wants to use us to put the heavenlies on notice. Praise God. If he can just get us to take our seats. Praise God. Did you not know that there are some things that are hidden in God that God has chosen not to reveal even to the powers and principalities until he can reveal them through us. I want you to get this. How powerful is that? But in order to do so, we have to take our seats. In other words, there are some secrets concerning you that have been hidden in God. Hallelujah. Since the beginning of the world. Watch this. Now let's go back because I don't want you to miss this. Let's go back to Ephesians chapter 3 again because I want you to get this. Watch this now. It says in verse number 8. I'm going to go back to verse 8 and read down to verse 9 once again. It says unto me, Paul says, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should pre preach among the Gentiles the insertable riches of Christ and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, watch this, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God. Watch this now. I'm going to continue. It says, who created all things by Jesus Christ to the intent, that means for the reason, mm -hmm. To the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places 
might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. He wants to use the church. Amen. It might be revealed to the principalities and powers in heavenly places by the church the manifold wisdom of God. What I'm trying to get you to see is God wants to use you. But God needs you in your seat. Come on, somebody. He wants you, praise God, to take a seat. Hallelujah. And we must understand that we can tap into these secrets of God, these things that God has hidden since the foundation of the world, if we learn how to take our seats. In other words, there are some secrets that God has been holding on to since the beginning of the world that can be unlocked through us. They can be unlocked through us. In other words, there are some secrets that the world will never know unless they are unlocked through the believer. Praise God. Why? Because once again, verse 9 says, they have been hidden in God since the beginning of the world. In other words, for the express purpose of bringing them forth in us. God is holding on to things. God has some things that's hidden on the inside of him that it's going to take you to get it out. It's going to take us, amen, or in other words, to be revealed to the heavens. Yeah, I'm talking about principalities and powers in heavenly places. Hallelujah. There are some things about us that can only be found in God. Mm -hmm. Universities can't teach it to you. Mm -hmm. Books can't reveal it to you. Mm -hmm. But it's got to be found in God because Ephesians 3 verse 9 says it has been hidden in God. Mm -hmm. Praise his name. If we're going to find it, we're going to have to find it in God. And then I love what Paul, what Paul even says in verse 8. Paul speaks of the unsearchable riches of Christ. I love the words that Paul uses in Ephesians. Now, earlier in Ephesians, he talked about the exceeding riches of Christ. Now, here in, the, in this chapter 3 of Ephesians, Paul is talking about the unsearchable riches of Christ. That God wants to reveal through us. Now, this word unsearchable that Paul uses lets us know that, amen, it cannot be found out by searching for it. Because he calls it unsearchable riches. Yes, yes. So, in other words, we, we got to understand that there's some things that God wants us to experience. It, it, it doesn't matter how much, praise God, that you try to read, amen. You can't, there are some things you, got, you can't find out except through the experiences that God wants you to have. Amen. They are unsearchable. It, it doesn't matter how much time you spend in the library. It doesn't matter how much time you spend, amen, trying to find it out. It's unsearchable, and God wants to reveal it through you. I wish somebody heard you, was hearing what I was saying this morning. Amen. Pray. Is it that you can't search for it because it's unsearchable? Amen. They have to be revealed by God through us. Jesus. You see, the scriptures reveal in chapter 3 that there are some things about us that are hidden in God, once again, that are not even known by the powers and principalities who are already in heavenly places. Praise God. In other words, these powers and principalities that are already in heavenly places do not know what God wants to reveal. You see, you are so special to God that he wants to introduce the secrets that have been hidden in him since the beginning of the world. Once again, that even the powers and principalities who are already in heavenly places do not know. You see, in my study, I have come to realize that God wants to introduce the heavenlies to you whom he has given a seat 
in the heavens. Pay close attention. God wants to introduce the heavenlies to you, who he has given us see in the heavens. The heavenlies are referenced when the scriptures use these terms, powers and principalities. And you, you, you must remember that. When it refers to powers and principalities, that's what it's talking about. And you see, some scholars believe that these powers and principalities that Ephesians chapter 3 and 10 talks about some scholars believe that they speak of angels and are hostile, hostile spiritual forces that are in heavenly places. Let me say that again. There are some scholars that believe that what these powers and principalities are referring to are either angels or hostile spiritual forces that are in heavenly places. But from my own personal study, I believe that verse 10 is a reference to both angels and hostile forces in heavenly places. Not, not just one or the other. Because the Bible doesn't specify. It just says powers and principalities in heavenly places. Amen. Now why do I believe that it is a reference to both angels and hostile spiritual forces? I believe that God Amen. It's, I believe that it's referred to angels because I believe that God wants to put both the angels on notice and the devils on notice that we are his children. Right. I believe that he, when he says powers and principalities, amen, he's talking about both, once again, angels and hostile spiritual forces because he wants to put the angels on notice and hell on notice that these are my children. Come on, somebody. Amen. He wants them to understand who you are. And why do I believe that he's putting the angels on notice? I believe that God is putting the angels on notice so that they will know who his children are, so they will know who they need to protect. For the Bible says in Psalms 91 and 11, for he shall give his angels, what? Charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. In other words, we have some heavenly bodyguards. Praise God. Because of the fact that God has seated us in heavenly places. Sometimes there are some things that you avoid in your life, amen, not because you avoided them, but because the angels, amen, that God has stationed round about you, has caused you to avoid them. Because the Bible says he has given his angels, Psalms 31 and 11, charge over us to keep us in all of our ways. Now, the only way that angels can keep charge over us is that they got to know who we are. This is why I believe the Bible is speaking of both the angels and hostile spiritual forces. And I'll talk about why uh, I believe it's hostile spiritual forces in a moment. But I believe he's talking about angels because he's given his angels charge over you to keep you. That's why some things that should have killed you didn't kill you. That's why some things that should have taken you out didn't take you out. That's why the accident that your own mom had didn't happen. Oh my God. How do you know that there was an accident that was supposed to happen to you that didn't happen? Amen. There were some things that almost happened but didn't happen because of the angels that God has given charge over you. And I remember on 95 not too long ago, a few months ago, amen, well, the speed limit is seven. I've had, I've had a couple of incidents there. And the latest one, I was driving early in the morning uh, to my job, and there were, it was dark outside, and there was a big truck stopped on 95, stopped in the middle of the highway. I didn't see it until I got up on. I, had, I was there, stuck behind a transfer truck that was not moving, while folks coming behind me 70 miles per hour. I couldn't even get over the other lane. I was trying to get over and there were cars, you know how these cars do, they were just zooming by, I couldn't hardly get over. But because I had some angels, my God, that were keeping charge over me. Let me tell you what happened. Praise God. I began, amen, uh, to, to move over to the lane, stuck my hand out the window, and there, here, here was another truck who stopped the 
traffic flow. That's the second time that a big transfer truck stopped traffic for me, praise God, to get by, to get through. Oh, you can say what you want, but I believe God has some angels. Come on, somebody. You can say what you want, but I believe God has some angels stationed there to get me to where I was going. Because if, if the devil had his way, now y'all know what could have happened. These folks don't pay attention anyway on the highway. Here, I'm talking to a truck driver. I'm looking at one right now who used to drive trucks. You know how these folks live on the highway. Amen. If my angels wasn't there keeping charge over me, it could have very, I could have very easily been smashed. Am I right about it? But because I had some angels, come on, somebody. Keeping charge over me, I was able to make it out. There's some things, praise God, that you were able to make it out of because of your angels. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. But I'm not ready to shout because of my angels who will keep me in all my ways. So yes, God wants the heavenlies to know who you are. Bless his name. That's why Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 lets us know, watch this now. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 14 lets us know that God has given us his name. Let's go there for a moment because I want you to see this. Ephesians chapter 3. There's so much good stuff in Ephesians that Paul shares with us. That's why I'm taking my time. Look, verse 14. Look what Paul says here. He says, chapter 3, verse 14, he says, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, whom the whole family in heaven and the earth is named. He gave you his name because he wants heaven to know who you are. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. Just like a wife takes on the name of her husband when they are married. Because you belong to God, God gives you his name. Oh my God. I'm going to get happy by myself. After all, the Bible lets us know that we are the bride of Christ. Praise God. You see, you must understand that you've been marked by God because the blood of Jesus has been applied to your life. Heaven knows who you are and hell knows who you are. Praise God. Bless his name. You've got some heavenly bodyguards. Praise the Lord. Now, why do I believe amen that this is also a reference to hostile spiritual forces? Forces. I believe Ephesians 3 and 10 is a reference to hostile spiritual forces because from my study, I believe that God is putting the devils on notice as to who his children are as well. So that the devil will know not to mess with his children. Come on, somebody. This is why the devil, once again, could not put his hand on Joel unless God gave him permission. Amen. Now remember this. As well. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12 lets us know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of the darkness of this world, against, watch this, spiritual wickedness in high places. I'm just giving you some evidence, amen, that there are some spiritual forces in high places that know who you are. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And couldn't take you out with it at a time when they wanted to because God would not allow it. Right. Amen. Amen. So yes, God is putting the forces of hell on notice and letting them know not to mess with his children. The one who has taken on his name. Amen. The one who he has given a seat in heavenly places. Amen. You're God's child. Amen. Somebody else shout real loud, I'm God's child. Come on. Come on, say it again. I'm God's child. And if you don't know, you better ask somebody. Amen. If you don't know who you're messing with, praise God, you better ask somebody because I'm God's child and he seated me in a heavenly place. Amen. And you better watch who you're messing with when you're messing with God's children. 
Hey, now tell somebody, hey man, if you don't know, you better ask somebody. I'm God's child. The next devil that tried, my God, the next devil that show up in your face messing with you, you better tell this, you better ask somebody, I'm, I'm God's child. You don't know who you're messing with. Praise God. I belong to the family of God. And he has given me his name. Woo. We've been given the name of God. The name, amen, given, given God's name. Uh, we, according to Ephesians 14, let me get it right. Paul says, for this cause I know my need. I know my, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who the Father, who the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Amen. Whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Praise God. Now why? Amen. I'm about, I'm about finished, but I want to share with you, amen, this analogy of God introducing you to the heavens. Because, once again, I believe that God wants the heavenlies to know who you are. Amen. You know how it is when a, a, a new manager comes on the job. And you know how it is when, uh, if you're in the military, praise God, how a new commander takes the reins in the military. Those who are already there have to be introduced to who the new person in charge is. Why? So when you see him or her anywhere, you will know who they are, and you don't end up saying something stupid in their presence. Because they're now in charge. They've been seated in a place of authority. Amen. So, the reason that you introduce to them is that you can be careful not to offend them because of their authority. You, you need to know who they are. Amen. Well, that is what I believe God does to the heavenlies concerning you and me. You need to know who this person is that I've seated in a heavenly place. According to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. You've been seated where? In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And as I said to you that, amen, seated, amen, this word being seated refers to, one of the things it refers to, amen, is a place of authority. And we got to know that we've got some authority with heaven. Amen. We need to know, praise God, amen, that God has given us some authority in heavenly places. Amen. You are somebody in God. Amen. And you just need to take your seat. You need to understand, praise God, that God has given you authority. Praise God. Once again, I want to take you back to Matthew. Amen. It was 16 and 18. Amen. Because I want to remind you once again of this authority that God has given to you. He says in verse 19, once again, I will give unto you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth, watch this, shall be bound in heaven. In other words, if you bind it on earth, it will be bound in heaven because God has given you power with heaven. I don't know about you, but I'm excited about the fact that God has given me power with heaven. Amen. Heaven knows who I am. And God knows who you are. And that's why he says, even in 2 Chronicles 7 and 14, amen, that if you who are called by his name Pray, humble yourself, seek your face, seek his face, turn from your wicked ways. He will hear from heaven. Forgive your sin and heal the land. We gotta take our seats in our heavenly places. You got power with heaven. Amen. We got power with heaven. Amen. We ought to send for praise. Right? As the song said, amen, that the praise team sang this morning, our hallelujahs belong to him. Yes. Amen. Our hallelujah belongs to him and he deserves our praise because we've been seated in heavenly 
places. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. I want you to stand all over this place. Amen. Because God has seated you in heavenly places. Anybody excited about what you've been seated? Come on, somebody. You ought to be excited that God has seated you in heavenly places. Praise God. There's so much more that Paul reveals in Ephesians. Amen. That I want us to understand. We praise God and understand some of the things that Paul tries to reveal here. Amen. We will not be having these, this low self-esteem, if you would. Because we're somebody in God. We're somebody in God. You must understand, amen, that you cannot judge who you are based on what you got. Amen. amen. But you can understand who you are based on where God has seated you. Mm -hmm. He seated you in a heavenly place in Christ Jesus. You're seated with Christ. Amen. I want you to understand today that you have some authority. Amen. Stop letting the devil beat up on you. Oh, no. Amen. Stop letting life beat up on you. Amen. amen. As I shared with you in Isaiah 45, verse 11 and 12, Amen. When God was talking about the sons, plural, of God. Amen. He said to you, command ye me. He says, concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. Anybody want God's hands to work on something in your life? Amen. Hallelujah. God says, concerning the work of my hands, Isaiah 45, verse 11 and 12, concerning the work of my hands, command ye me. In other words, God wants you to say something. He wants you to understand where you are seated so you can open your mouth and say something. Speak to something. Speak to things. Yes, people don't think you're crazy, but keep speaking. Amen. Amen. People don't think you don't have no sense. They already think you're crazy anyway. Amen. Give them some more reasons. Speak to things when they get in your way. Lord, have mercy. And then the most important thing is you should speak to God about things that are in your way because you have power over heaven. Oh my God, I'm trying to I'm trying to drive this point home. You don't have to stay in a place or position of getting beat up by the devil. You ever you ever seen a bullet? Some of y'all know. Some of y'all know something about bullets. Some of y'all might have been bullets. I hope you won. Amen. The bullets take advantage of folk. Who don't fight back. That's the way the devil is. And when you don't know you have the authority that God has given you, the devil will beat up on you. You sit there with authority. You sit there with keys that God has given you that you can begin to speak and bind that devil. Amen. But you won't, you won't use your keys. Don't death, the devil ain't nothing but a bullet. Hoping he can find somebody who don't know how to fight back. Hoping to find somebody who doesn't know that they have some authority with heaven. Remember now, God wants the heavenlies to be on notice as to who his children are. I need you to get that. And if you haven't got that, I need you to spend some time studying that so you can get it in your spirit. When you step out of your house, they don't know who you are. Amen. When, when you're driving down the street, Heaven and hell knows who you are because you are God's child. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. And I love God. Amen. Because of the authority he's given us as children of God. Amen. So I want you to lift your hands. Amen. All over this place. Amen. And let's just, just for a moment, let's worship God. Come on, worship God. Just for a moment. I want you just to thank him. I want you to appreciate him. I want you to love on Jesus for a moment. And just thank him for the seat that he's given you in the heavenly places. I gotta keep driving this point home. You you've got some authority because you're seated 
in heavenly places. Oh, bless your name. Come on, worship a moment. Hallelujah. Yes, God. God, we thank you today. We thank you for the seed you've given us in heavenly places, God. God, we thank you for this authority that you've given us. We thank you, God, for the keys of the kingdom of heaven that you've given us. The reason we've got keys is because we got a seat. And God, I thank you today that no weapon has formed against us shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against us in judgment, we shall condemn because we got power with heaven. So God, we're going to begin to open our mouths. We're going to begin to declare who we are. We're going to begin to decree a thing. Father, we're going to begin to bind and loose because we got power with heaven. We are seated in a heavenly place. And God, I just want to thank you today that because of the power you've given us, things are going to begin to change in our lives. Father, doors are going to begin to open because we're going to begin to speak to doors. We're going to begin to speak to things because we got power with heaven and we've got a seat in heavenly places. God, I thank you today that we are children of the living God. Thank you today that we're your sons and daughters. And God, I just want to thank you for the way you made. I want to thank you for your son, Jesus. Father, who you allowed to die and raised up again and sat him at the right hand of the Father in heavenly places. And then you sat us right there too in a heavenly place. And God, we thank you for that. We didn't deserve it, but you did it anyway. There's nothing we did to deserve it, but you did it anyway. And we just want to say thank you. Had it not been for your goodness in our lives, we wouldn't have made it. God, had it not been for your goodness, then the accident would have taken us out. The pandemic would have taken us out. But your mercy and your grace has sustained us. And then God, I thank you for what Ephesians chapter 2 verse 7 says to us, that there are some exceeding riches that you want to show to us. Open our eyes, God, that we will see the exceeding riches that you want to show us because we are seated in heavenly places in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, God, I pray for that person today who don't know you in the pardon of their sins. I pray for the sinner Father, who's been running from you when you have the answers for their lives. I pray for them today in Jesus' name. Allow somebody, Father, to say, what shall I do to be saved? God, fill them with the Spirit in Jesus' name. Pray for every person on the sound of my voice. That includes those that are in this building and those listening by way of social media, I pray for them. I pray for their families. In Jesus' name, I pray for loved ones, Father, who are challenged, challenged in different areas of their life. Father, I pray for the family of Brother Haynes, whose life was lost on this week. But Father, now she's in a better place. I pray for them, Lord, that you would comfort them in Jesus' name. Because you are God and you are able. We give you praise for it now. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you and praise you. Amen. Amen. And amen. Come on, once again, lift your hands to him. Come on, lift your hands. Come on, just, just love on Jesus. Come on, love on Jesus. Love on Jesus. God, we thank you today. We thank you today. There's none like you. There is none like you, Jesus. We love you, God. Continue to bless 
In Jesus' name, amen. amen. We thank God for you. Amen. Appreciate you. Amen. Your attention today. Amen. What God has given me to share with you. Was it my intention to be long? And I don't think I was very long today. But I want to tell you today to take your seat. In Jesus. And we thank God for our social media audience. Uh, those that may be tuned in. Thank God for you. We appreciate you. Amen. For being a part. Amen. Of our service today. We don't take it lightly. Amen. For those of you that have joined in. Or those who might watch it at a later time. We thank God for you. And we pray that somehow, some way, some way the word would bless your life. Thank God each of you. Bless you. Amen.